everybody, I'm Courtney Goodson and I'm here with Jayla Mina from Bad Girls Club Season 14. Thank you so much for being on the show, Jayla. Thank you for having me. <laughs> How has everything been since the reunion of the show? Um, it's been a, like a learning experience. I think going into the show, I kind of thought it was going to be one way and it turned out to be another way. And then just even coming home and trying to like reacclimate myself or like throw myself back into the midst of real like real life yeah. activities it was somewhat of a struggle because you come home and like for me I had this figment in my imagination like I was like this A-list celebrity like Beyonce <laughs> yeah but nobody knew who I was and so then like the reunion came so you know the show was like being like talked about yeah. more publicity so when I after the reunion you know just because of like social media and stuff like that people started to like know who I was like more like when I would go out or like just being out and um it's been a transition or it's been a process you know getting used to my newfound fame yeah but it's cool so far so what did you think bad girls club would be like well I knew that it would be the the typical drama or like the minuscule arguments and yeah. things like that but um like you would always hear like the girls say, oh my God, I was in the house with this girl for, you know, a month or three weeks or whatever, but I feel like I've known you my whole life. And I, you know, you sit back, yeah, yeah. when you see stuff like that, you sit back and be like, really? Yeah. You don't know her. <laughs> That's not your yeah. friend. Like, mm -hmm. But you really do form bonds with people because y'all come from either similar mm -hmm. backgrounds or y'all have similar stories or y'all are just able to relate to each other, you know, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And being in that type of environment where it is kind of like being in jail so you know just being <laughs> in jail <laughs> no it is because uh -huh. we don't really connect with the outside world without permission oh, so like okay, we so don't that's have how it works yeah okay. like like we don't have a tv we have one landline phone we mm -hmm. can't listen to music so you know we really can only interact with each other so mm -hmm. when you're thrown in an environment a, a controlled environment mm -hmm. where you're being recorded on tv where you're being recorded mm -hmm. And there are cameras around all the time you do kind of form bonds to people that like similar things as you do yeah. so so you couldn't have your cell phone you couldn't talk to anybody girl what no before I left to go do the show I call like everybody there. I'm like oh. I'm like what's your phone number you got a house phone right <laughs> look I'm like oh what's your email do you check your email so you could email so y'all had a computer yeah we oh, have a computer cool. yeah we have one computer and then we have one house phone so how was it like coming into a a house with complete strangers because you didn't know anybody right you didn't know anybody before okay so how was it like how was that experience honestly I was nervous because I didn't know what to expect yeah. like I didn't know if they I didn't know if the other girls were gonna like me or not yeah. I didn't know if I was gonna get along with anybody I didn't know how long I was gonna last I didn't know if I was gonna like <laughs> I, mean, I knew it wasn't nobody gonna pick on yeah. me I knew I wasn't gonna be like the underdog or anything but I just didn't know what type of personalities or what other type of energy I was mm -hmm. about to come in contact with. And so you kicked it off like you and uh, the Clermont twins, mm -hmm. y'all like clicked as soon as y'all, like the very first episode. How, like, do y'all still talk now? Do you mm -hmm. keep in touch, really? Yeah, we still keep in touch. We haven't seen each other since, um, since April. Yeah, I haven't seen them since April, but we still keep in touch. And so run me through the night that you guys got removed, cause y'all y'all clicked together. <laughs> y'all y'all was cool. Y'all was cool. Like the very first episode that y'all got removed at the same time. Yeah. Uh, what episode was it? That was episode seven. Episode seven. Y'all got removed. Like walk me through that night because I'm still kind of you know iffy about the whole like entire areas. situation. Yeah. Okay, so basically, or I'll just walk you through that day okay. because in order for you to understand what happened that night, you have to like you have to know that day. Okay. So. We were getting ready, or that happened happened on a Saturday. That Sunday, we were supposed to have a bikini car wash. We were going to raise money for charity or whatever. So early Saturday morning, we got up and we went to like the arts and crafts store, and um, you know just got like some supplies so we can make like poster boards and you know just different cute little signs and decorate our bikinis or you know whatever. Yeah. Um, for the next day, mm -hmm. and so um, what happened? So we all get back home the night before the others had gone out and I don't think we went out or either we had a lighter night than they did. They came home drunk. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so they came home drunk and we decided to go to the arts and crafts store the next day. Well, we had wanted to go we wanted to go go karting. Mm -hmm. So when we went go karting, they decided to, you know, stay home and rest up, you know, for later on. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, cool, whatever, no big deal. Mm -hmm. But 
just the the energy of the whole day just seemed real weird yeah everything was just kind of off it wasn't a bad day but it wasn't a day that kind of like to this a normal day it like, wasn't normal yeah, it was yeah. just very like i was just kind of like uneasy the whole day i just kept telling the twins i was like y'all just be ready for whatever <laughs> something is going on like I just felt the energy. Were the girls acting weird? Or was Kat and them acting weird? Or they weren't really acting weird. They weren't as combative as they normally would. Like it was like if you breathe wrong, what's up? Like, we <laughs> arguing right here. What's up? We in the living room. Yeah. What? But like this one particular, I think we had all gotten to the point where it was like, oh, you breathing wrong? I ain't got time for you. Yeah. Today, I'm gonna go that way. I think we had all kind of gotten to the point where we were just ready to like just coexist and get it over with. Mm -hmm and not fight as much as we you know bickering and stuff so this one particular day it wasn't very many arguments but i mean of course me and the twins are in one jeep they're in another jeep we talking cash yeah we just mm -hmm. we going off in the car whatever mm -hmm. they going off in the car like when we leave the arts and crafts store because i always drove everywhere mm -hmm. And one of their girls always drove, but I would always try to like leave them or yeah. like drive fast to leave them. Yeah. On <laughs> so we get home. They don't want to go to. They don't want to go go karting with us. So we go and you know we have a good time. So that night, you know, fast forward. Yeah. Uh, the night comes and I don't know whether I think I'm like on the phone with like my mom or my sister. I think I was on the phone with my sister. Okay. And um, we were getting ready to go out. And the way that it typically works is, um, even if we're not going to go to the same location, we get the limo twice a week. So if we get the limo twice a week, if we're not going to go to the same place, mm -hmm. we just have to let production know ahead of time so that the, the limo driver knows yeah. that he's making multiple stops. Mm -hmm. um, so they wanted to go one place. We wanted to go another place. And they tried to like kind of like invite us, but not invite us. Yeah to where they were going like let's just say they were going to like john's pool hall and they, like one of the girls like oh yeah we're gonna go to john's pool hall so if y'all want to come y'all can and i'm like we already got plans anyway like yeah we weren't coming with y'all like or let's just say we were gonna go there too uh -huh. and i'm just like well we were going already but we wasn't going with y'all so yeah, if so y'all want to go <laughs> y'all can come with us <laughs> so i get off the phone and I get upstairs and I don't know what has transpired between like a 30, 30, 45 minute time yeah. period. But I get up there, the twins are in the bathroom, like getting dressed, but going real fast. Mm -hmm. Cause we're always the last people dressed. Everybody is always waiting on us downstairs. Mm -hmm. the, the production phone will be ringing. Bing, 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 bing. Jayla, get <laughs> downstairs. Let's go. Yeah. Out the door. Like they're always waiting on uh -huh. me. So this one particular night, I walk into the bathroom. The twins are in there getting dressed. I came in on the tail end of them exchanging words with Jenna. Like if you watch that episode, you see them get into it with Jenna because somebody dropped their towel. One of the twins dropped their towel or their towel oh, dropped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically one of their towels dropped or they was walking through and maybe dropped their towel to throw shade because we have better bodies than they did. <laughs> so maybe she, you know, dropped her towel to throw shade. Mm -hmm. I don't know because I wasn't up there. Yeah. So they exchanged words because Jenna didn't know that twin heard her talking about her for dropping her towel. Okay. So when I got up there, I'm in the bath. I walked into the bathroom and they were like, "Fuck these bitches, be leaving in the night." And I was oh. like, "Huh? Leaving who? I'm not leaving who? <laughs> what, what's going on?" So they were like, "You know, they wanna, you know, keep going back and forth, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. We're gonna leave them." And I was like, "All right." Cool. Just let me yeah. know when to be ready. They're like, <laughs> now, hurry up. Like, just they're like, Jayla, you know, hurry up, do what you gotta do, but do it fast. Yeah. Don't cause no scene. Don't even make it seem like you're trying to like rush to get dressed yeah. and be like, just be, be cool. just be cool yeah. about it. But hurry up. Yeah. So, I'm getting dressed or whatever, and they're still in the other room talking or whatever. And I'm just like, Lou, do y'all know we're leaving you tonight? <laughs> <laughs> So that's pretty much how it happened. Like um, we were all standing downstairs in the foyer, mm -hmm. um, with the exception of one of their girls. Yeah, we were waiting on one of them this time. And so Jazz says, "Is the limo here yet?" That was all we needed to hear because we, me and the twins, had just walked out of the kitchen from taking a shot. Yeah. So I think Sinead was standing in the window, and Shannon was standing like not too far behind me or like beside me. Mm -hmm. So literally when Jasmine said, is a limo outside? Sinead looked out the window and booked out the front door. 
And that's when you see me <laughs> and Shannon like right behind her, like shit. Yeah. And what's the other girls? Did they see you running up? Did they, did they see you? They were they were right here like this. They oh, could have okay. ran oh, over okay. with us. Okay. So that's why I'm always confused. Like when I try to replay that night, like you know, I understand like we had our growing issue. I understand we had our growing beef, mm -hmm. guys, but. Y'all were able. Yeah. Y'all were able bodied. We mm -hmm. were all standing in the same area together. When y'all seen us run out the front door, why y'all ain't come running too? Like we came too. Yeah. You know when you see a black person run, you you run too. The whole gang run. run. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, okay, whatever. So we basically we ran outside. We got we had a chance for production to send somebody to unlock the limo, mm -hmm. and then let us on. They that's never, a lot of time. That's a lot of time. They never came out. They never came outside until we were actually on the bus because there's a monitor in the in between the two front seats. Uh -huh. And so I was looking before they raised about the privacy you yeah. know, partition uh -huh. or whatever. I looked at it and they were just looking out the window and then they walked outside like maybe somebody got on the phone and said, oh, y'all walk outside. Yeah. But they it's never tried to jiggle the handle or anything because mm -hmm. We didn't lock it. Yeah. We shut y'all out. Mm -hmm. We didn't lock it until we were about to pull off. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all could have easily, mm -hmm. just how we told production, unlock the door and let us on the bus. Y'all could have done the same thing. Could have yeah. done the same thing. <laughs> so, I mean, they used that as their ammo. So, they stayed home that night. And when we was when we were, like, on our way to the club, thinking we was big and bad, yeah. talking, girl, <laughs> talking trash. When I tell you, we was on there like, what? I'm like, is anybody... Who's talking now? <laughs> Anything from, cause we always kind of like sat on the opposite ends of the bus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the, th the four of them would sit together. Me and the twins would sit together. Mm -hmm. They were always like whispering or you may hear a smart comment come from their side or you may hear one come from our side. Mm -hmm. Anything, anything today. <laughs> oh, nothing? Girl. <laughs> I bet they were saying the same thing yeah. when they was grabbing our stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, y'all bitches got something to say today? Yeah. Okay. Oh, this your cute shirt? Oh, these your shoes? <laughs> oh, let me, let me pee on this real quick. You, oh, you want that? You like that? I got you, girl. <laughs> so, that's, that's terrible. So, what, like, actually got y'all removed? Like, what got you three removed? Because, I mean, I feel like, you know, they did their dirt. Yeah. And then, what was y'all's dirt, you know, when y'all came home? Like, what actually got y'all removed? I think the thing for production, if they could have contained us or if they would have, if they would have known that they could have gotten us under control mm -hmm. at some point, we would have been fine. But for us, it was just the level of disrespect had gone to like, it was, it had, it was, you know, it's your belongings. It, it's yeah. our belongings. Things had gotten to a point where, you know, it's no longer a practical joke. You know what I mean? There's a fine line between playing a practical joke on someone and just doing things with malicious intent and just like evilness mm -hmm. and hatred, you know, in your heart. Mm -hmm. And for us, that was really the straw that broke the camel's back because I can get into it with you all day, every single day. Mm -hmm. But if you have a prized possession or if you have something mm -hmm. and if we come in the house on the very first day, we're going to argue, guys, we're going to get get into it. We're going to go back and forth, but we're not going to destroy each other's stuff. Mm -hmm. Hello, that's what we meant. Don't touch our stuff. Yeah. They uh, production allowed them to de to destroy our belongings, and then they removed them from the house so that we couldn't fight them. Yeah. So, so this is what you tell me. We leave and we go to the club with y'all supervision, mm -hmm. and y'all know where we're going, and you let them stay home, destroy our stuff, mm -hmm. and not tell them not to touch our stuff because we aren't there to protect our own things. Mm -hmm. You let them destroy our stuff and publicly humiliate us. But when we get home, <clears throat> you don't think that energy should be reciprocated? You don't think we should have the same opportunity to defend our honor or our belongings or just whatever? Like, That's, what are you thinking? I was confused when I watched that episode because I was like, oh yeah, it's about to be some stuff. When exactly. I saw that, I was like, they're about to throw some hands. But then I, after like I watched it, I was like, y'all That's what home. really what? pissed us off the most. Because when they removed them, or basically they put them in one room and told us that we couldn't touch them or we couldn't touch their stuff or we were going home. But at that point, we was like, it was like, y'all already, my like, stuff was already destroyed. Hello, you already let them ruin all of my stuff. I can't go to church tomorrow and it's Easter Sunday. I don't care what you have to say. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. So by the time, yeah, like once they removed them from the house and told us that we couldn't touch their stuff, we was like, all right, well, if we can't touch their stuff, we'll touch y'all stuff. Mm-hmm. And y'all stuff is way more expensive. Mm-hmm. So that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And that's sure. why they sent us home. Okay. And because, nice. you know, we were like threatening them. You know, I told yeah, them. Yeah, that's what I heard some, th- like, you know. We were like making threats and stuff, you know. But what do you expect if you don't let me fight you then? I mean, exactly. <laughs> you're going to hear some words, you know. You would exactly. think. So, so. so how would, like, so before the show, how was, what was your following on social media? Because I know after the second part of the reunion, your followers went up, right? I literally, after this, after my portion of the reunion, mm-hmm. I would say I probably gained between 20 and 30,000 followers in a matter of 24 hours. Wow. Yeah. Before I went on the show, I think I either had, I think I was close to like maybe, I think I had 8,000 followers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like in the like 8,000 8, range. That's not bad, it's there. a lot, it's more than the average person. I mean, yeah, because <coughs> before the show, I had kind of taken myself away from, inter- mm-hmm. sorry, I had r- taken myself away from entertainment for mm-hmm. a while. I was, I'm not gonna say, oh, I was just a regular working girl, but to a certain degree I was, Mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't on blogs or websites Mm -hmm. or magazines, hosting parties and stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, every single day of the week. And um, I was, I was a regular girl. I was Mm -hmm. a regular office working nine to five woman. So what were you doing? Like, where were you working before the show? Um, I always worked in property management. Mm -hmm. I worked for the same property management company for about two and a half years. And I basically worked my way up from a leasing consultant or like a leasing agent Mm -hmm. and like a leasing manager. And I started training to be an assistant manager. So around the time that, like, I got fired. So. Oh, okay. So if you would, oh, so you got fired. Mm-hmm. So if you if you hadn't gone on Bad Girls Club, what would you, what would you what do you think you would have been working then? Um, I probably or working now. Um, I probably would have not even probably. I definitely would have gotten another job mm-hmm. in corporate America doing something like either either I would have gone back into sales. Or I would have like gone into HR. Yeah. Cause I like talking to people. I'm a very like yeah. You're like really outgoing. Yeah. Like, you're like, down to earth. Yeah. I'm a people person. Mm-hmm. So. I would have done something that would have still gave, me, still would have given me the opportunity to talk to people. So what? Um, so the things that you say on Bad Girls Club mm-hmm. became be- very popular with your fans. Like, if you get on my face one more time, I'm gonna slide your ass. Like, you know, stuff like that became very popular. So what would you say is the most popular saying that you said from the show? Welcome to the Jayla show. Welcome to the Jayla show. People love Welcome to the Jayla show. You've been a fan. And um, or that's really just one of my hashtags. They like you that one. Yeah. And then um, I'm gonna slide you for whatever reason. I don't I, know. I, why. Okay, let me tell you. When I watched that episode, me and my mom were watching it. And once you said that, I was like, it's something between me and Jayla. We have this connection. Like it's that. I don't know if it's that Houston connection. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the Houston connection or it's just because I was talking to my brother-in-law and he said that he didn't even know what that meant. And he's from Houston. He's been in Houston his entire life, so I'm like, well, some people know what it means and some people don't, but I knew what it meant. You know, like you knew it. You get on my face. You know, I'm, I'm I'm, you know, like you can like picture that in your head yeah. when you say it. So I don't know. I think that that was my favorite too, though. Like I, I that was when once I watched that, I was like, yeah. That's and my then girl. like I didn't know people from other places said that. Like I had people from Tallahassee, like from Florida, like oh yeah, you said don't slide. I'm like y'all say that. What? Yeah, I thought it was a Houston thing. I thought it was only a Houston thing. Yeah. So that's why when I said it. When I said it, mm-hmm. I knew what I was saying when I said it. Like, yeah. I would say slide. Like, who yeah, yeah. Like, it just, like, you was just feeling it. I was in the moment. Yeah. I'm from Houston. You got to put on for, like, your city. So yeah. I'm like, I'm going to beat this on so the <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> That is hilarious. So what projects are you working on now that you're done with Bad Girls Club? Um, well, right now I'm actually studying a script. Um, I'm filming some scenes for a movie tomorrow mm-hmm. and um i actually got a phone call to see if i would would potentially be interested in doing another reality show what reality show i can't say okay okay but um it is a it is a big one it's not on oxygen okay but it is a big one but with it not being on oxygen i don't know if i can do it or not because i'm Why still not? under contract with them so you could possibly do another reality show with oxygen mm-hmm. Oh really? But, but oxygen has to. It would be be on oxygen's behalf. Like, um, like I'm working on the Jayla show. Mm-hmm. I'm about to start like filming or you know getting my location. Yeah, okay. 
So once I start working on the Jayla show, I'm actually going to pitch it to Oxygen first. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go and pitch it like to other networks. But I'm sure Oxygen is going to pick it up. Yeah. Or one of their, you know, sister networks. Because a lot of people don't know that Oxygen is under um, NBC Universal. Oh, and so it's Bravo and someone else. Which in turn works for me because I can always or prayerfully cross yeah. promote my brands mm -hmm. on all of those all networks. The networks. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and I know you have your own clothing line that you're starting. How is yes. that going? Yes, um, I'm working on. It's called Normal Culture, mm -hmm. and it's going good so far. Um, but I'm just ner nervous about it because I guess as um, as the owner or like with it being like my line, like yeah. I think everything that I do is like great or fabulous. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes you have to take a step back and look at things from like a consumer standpoint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I did like a trial run by like uploading my shirts and stuff to the internet just to kind of see like what type of like feedback and stuff I would get. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been getting good feedback, you know, so far about my line, but I really wanted to like, when I come out with like all of my pieces, yeah. I want it to be like a banger. I want people to be like, oh my God, I I'm it. glad you waited to release this and not, mm -hmm. you know, just give us anything. So I'm taking my time and I'm making normal culture great. Yeah. So. And what, like, what, what, is, what inspired you to name it normal culture? Like, where did the name come from? Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. I was, it was 2009 and I was sitting on my mom's couch girl when she lived in Katy. I think I might have been home from college either it was the summer of 2009 or maybe like that spring semester because I was at home for something I couldn't remember what I was home for but I was just sitting down watching TV and I've always been the type of person um, to put my ideas on paper or like I like to write mm -hmm. and I like to blog and stuff and that was around the time where you know a lot of my friends were like getting on like tumblr and stuff like that and I'm like I need a cool like tumblr name and I was like but whatever it is I want to turn it into a business later I won't use it for a business right now but whatever I do I knew that I wanted to turn it into a business so you know I like when you put words together and they have a nice wordplay mm -hmm. like free people you know what it I mean? Just it just good. sounds like it just good. Flows, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I was like, you know, I want whatever my brand is or whatever I decide to like go with. I was like, I wanted to embody that same thing. And I was like, normal culture. Are you serious? Normal culture just popped up in your head. It really like, it really just popped into my head and I put it in my phone and I would always like, like wherever my computer was or like wherever my notes and thoughts and stuff mm -hmm. were like I would always just write stuff out like whatever I wanted normal culture to be so like I started off with with normal culture you know as just my tumblr and yeah. my blog mm -hmm. and like your tumblr and your blog tend to be like that's your thoughts that's your way of life it's who you are as a mm -hmm. person and I want to take that same mantra or that same idea and open normal culture up globally to the world. I don't want it to just be a clothing line, but I think that's a good place to start mm -hmm. because it helps create your brand and create a following. And then when you have a brand or you have something that you represent that actually, you know, represents positivity mm -hmm. or you know that's promoting positivity mm -hmm. or empowerment I feel like that will make people like gravitate towards you so I just want people to know that like normal culture is whatever is normal to you whatever culture is to you like that's your normal culture mm -hmm. so what's normal to me my new norm is not your new norm but okay, who's to say too. but you okay. know what I'm saying yeah, like, I know. I, yeah. but yeah it's like but who's to say that you're wrong or who's to say that I'm right yeah. you know what I mean I like so that. I want people to like love normal culture and know that it's all about like really loving the skin that you're in and accepting you for you that is normal culture I love that. so when can people start buying your products well right <coughs> now you can go on my website or you can go on my Instagram mm -hmm. I have a link to my big cartel I have two shirts available right now um, so I have my staple tea or like my signature tea that's always never going to change is available now and then I also have another one with like a cute catchy saying um, from the show and like from social media so those two are available right now on my website and um, for the rest of my the rest of my line it should be out I would say like by February February okay so, yeah. I'm taking the rest of yeah I'm taking the rest of January or and the rest of this year to just like close it out work on it and perfect the minor details mm -hmm. so that once I release it it's like okay this was worth the wait yeah yeah okay um and so what you say you like to write 
Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider writing a book? Oh, I'm gonna write books. You are? I wanna write at least three or four books, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. About what, just? Just everything, like, um, well, I wanna write a book about my life, mm -hmm. and um, just like a broad book, just like a, an autobiography, mm -hmm. and then I actually wanna write a book about being a woman living in a big city, being a black woman living in a big city, and just being a woman that is somewhat lost and finding her way, but not losing herself along the way. Okay. So, and then I want to write another book. I'm like, and I want to write another book. <laughs> and then, you know, I just want to write another book, just like a narrative, kind of like a narrative, but something like that's like for kids. Yeah. Something very like, that will kind of like challenge your imagination that's not so serious that kind of takes you like you know like like I'm the type of person like when I read a book I really get into it like it becomes a part of my imagination like I can see the colors and I really mm -hmm. like embody it like I want to write like short stories and stuff like that for kids. Yeah I used to want to write short stories yeah. when I was little then I got over it because I don't like reading so. Really? No, I don't like oh yeah I love to write like short stories and poems for kids. I really? love stuff like that. Oh yeah. So what is your, okay, so you say you would write books, you act, you model, what's your mm -hmm. dream job? Like, what's the top, like, top-notch goal that you, in five or ten years, that you plan on? Like, check, like, if I check this off my bucket list, I feel like I made it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to be a Victoria's Secret angel. Really? That is I like, can see it I that's can like see it my too. ultimate, like, when people, my whole life, growing up, people would always be like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or, you know when you know that you have reached the pinnacle of your success like what is that moment that you know that you made it yeah. or that you feel like okay i can have a seat now i can rest i can breathe mm -hmm. just give me my wings i wear white anyway yeah i wasn't expecting that answer i don't know what i was expecting but i wasn't expecting that that i can see you yeah. being a victoria yeah yeah like for my modeling career or just like i'm not even gonna say just for my modeling career but just in my life I've always just wanted to to walk that runway. I just want to walk that runway once. Just give me one yeah. opportunity and I will be satisfied. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are you doing when you're not handling business? Because you're busy. You're busy now. You're always busy. Yeah, so what I'm are you always doing? busy. What's fun to you? Chilling. Chilling? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> um, I'm a homebody. I'm a very laid back person. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm very chill i'm just very a go with the flow very easy going type mm -hmm. of person so i like to relax like because now that i don't work a nine to five i'm always putting in more hours and more work to make sure that yeah. i'm making money and that business is staying afloat mm -hmm. so when i do have spare time i'm usually like at a happy hour mm -hmm. i'm like a happy hour just normal person yeah just chilling hanging out stuff. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i don't see that ring on your finger that you purchased. You, you told me that okay. last time I talked to you. That you know you what? I was just looking for my ring. Girl. You told me that you bought a ring. Can you please tell me the story behind let me, buying that ring? Can I just see if my ring is Yes, please do. Me too. Me. Yes. Because um, I need everybody to see this ring because Jayla told me that she purchased a ring. And I'm going to let her tell you why she purchased a ring. But it's a pretty, it looks pretty expensive. It was expensive. Okay, it was expensive. <laughs> what is a girl? Where is my ring? You were looking for it before you came? I was. I took it off for something. See, this how I know. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready for it. <laughs> My man gonna be like, babe, what you mean you took it off for something? What? You don't take that off for yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Okay. I don't have my ring. Mm hmm But basically, I went and I bought this ring for a couple of reasons. Well, for like two reasons. Mm -hmm. The first ring reason is because like when I go places, I'm single, but I always get harassed. Every time I go places, I don't want to be harassed mm -hmm. like by men. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm at the bar, somebody's going to walk up and say, hey, can I buy you a drink? If I'm like, oh no, I'm fine, thank you. They're gonna insist on buying me a drink. Or if I, or if they say, hey, you know, can I have your phone number? I want to get to know you. Mm -hmm. I can be like, oh well, I have a man. Yeah. I'm, I'm sing right. single, mm -hmm. single, and I'd be like, oh, I got a man. Mm -hmm. Baby, you can't have friends. What did I just tell you I had a man? Mm -hmm. So that's one reason I bought the ring, so that when I go places and I don't want people to approach me, or if I don't really want to be bothered, I can fake like somebody loves me and I'm engaged. Mm -hmm. 
the other reason that I bought this ring is more like for my subconscious because I'm about to be 26 in a month and I want to be married by the time I'm 30 and you know how they say like you know if you want things you have to manifest it into your life yeah. so it's kind of like having a vision board mm -hmm. if you look at it all the time it'll remind you of the things that you want mm -hmm. so that's the type of ring that I want like for my engagement ring so I was like if I go ahead and buy and buy this you know maybe I can manifest my engagement ring and my man so okay. I thought that was so <laughs> hilarious like she told me she was like Oh, girl, I just bought this ring and she showed me the picture. I was like, why did you buy yourself a ring? <laughs> but this is, the, this is the kicker. The ring looks very expensive. It looks like... It does. No, it, it really like, does. No, it seriously. Really, that's why I asked you, yeah. where did you get that from when you first showed me? And I was like, okay. okay I, would, I would tell y'all where I got my ring from, but... <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I know, y'all will be popping up hashtagging Jayla's ring or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Or y'all will be hashtagging where I got my <laughs> ring from. I don't need nobody on my Instagram blowing up my spot, mm -hmm. okay? Just let me and my ring be. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have a game that I want us to play. It's kind of like charades, but it's not. It's called Heads Up. Okay. And so, the object of the game is that, okay, so let me tell you what you're going to do. So, you're going to put this phone on your head. And it's gonna give me. It's gonna show up. My team put together a deck of cards, and it has some names from the show, from Bad Girls Club, okay. and it has some outsider names. And so I'm gonna try to act it out to you, and you have to guess it. It gives you about. I think it gives you 60 seconds or 50 seconds. You have a time clock. And so if you don't, if we, if I, if, I, if you guess it right, you tip it down. So you'll go. You'll tip it down, and if you want to pass the question, you tip it up. Okay. All right. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see how good of a team we are. Okay. All right. We got this, though. I think we got this. Yeah, we do. We got this big. We do. I'm like, oh, Lord, who you to put on this? <laughs> 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 All right. I'm ready when you are. Please don't slide me. Jenna. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know when it how I link. Drake. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> uh, Jayla. Um. Shit. Jayla. Ah. Lauren. Yes. I, <laughs> I just knew it. <laughs> she came back again. Um. Please don't slide me again. Don't slide me <laughs> twice. <laughs> I don't want the second round in the kitchen. Um. I'm number one and I dab. Dab. Can't Dab. Yes. Yes. Ah. Yes. <laughs> um. Oh. Um. <laughs> Uh, please don't pop me in the face. Don't pop me in the face on reunion on the reunion part two. Cat. Yes. Um. Uh. I have a twin sister and we're cute. Shannon. Shannon. Both the twins. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um. Oh my God. We did okay. We did okay. We did okay. Yeah, we missed Jazz. Jazz was the last person. Oh, and Chief Key. But it's okay. Hey. We got hey. <laughs> this was fun, though. That Thank was you fun. so much for coming on the show, Jayla. No problem. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you just taking the time out to find out a little bit about my boring life. No, it's not boring. Y'all make sure y'all um, cop some gear. You said the clothing line, you said that they, they can purchase stuff on the website right now. You can purchase stuff. If you go to my Instagram, um, of course, it's my name, Jayla Mina. You'll see a link. Um, for my big cartel and I have two shirts that are available now. Okay, y'all make sure y'all go cop. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you Jayla again. Um, and I'll see y'all guys. I'll see you January 7th. Bye guys. Thanks.